Oh, 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 oh. For everybody, Miss William and Mary do moved out this weekend. Uh, he sent me an email and he said he watched the video. He liked it. He, he thought it was good. Uh, he he appreciated the comments. He's the wife, the kid. She saw it. He sat down and he said, I took a page from your book when you were in the boarding house. I sat down with pen and paper and I calculated which was going to be less costly, a divorce or sending her to school. He said, divorcing my wife is less costly than sending her to school. So he's like, you know, I don't know if we will get a divorce, but I told him, that's my wife, what's going on? So he said, I am not paying for it. I'm moving out and, you know, we can get counseling or whatever, but this is where I stand and you two can do whatever. So that's what he did. And as you can probably read between the lines, there's other issues in the marriage because this, this has probably been brewing for a long time. But clearly, you, you have to understand that this is how life goes. I tell you, it has been the week for the weeks for consults. It's also been the week for just some crazy, crazy stuff. I was speaking, like yesterday I had two consults. Yesterday was a long freaking day. But it was a really good day. The last consult was awesome. Just awesome. Love that guy and his family. He's got a beautiful family. The first one, it is, um, it's, uh, I guess you'll have to file it under, I don't believe this because I'm actually surprised in that for your money back. Because I got an email this morning before I head out to run errands and uh, they want to talk again. So apparently harsh truth isn't that bad. But the first consult is what's the going to be the nucleus of what I'm going to wrap this up in because it's a common issue. It's uh, what I deserve versus what I earn. And for many people, that concept is a problem. It's problematic in a major, major way because you hear it all the time. Like, just take you. Yeah, you people watching this video. I don't deserve your views. I have to earn your views. If I know if I'm not witty, funny, serious, wise, whatever reason that you come to this channel, if that doesn't happen, you're going away. And that's very, very fair. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's a very equitable playing field in my mind. But for many people, there's something wrong with that because they feel entitled to your views. They feel entitled to your time. I look at it as I have to come up with these videos. I have to come up with concepts. I have to discuss certain things to earn your views. When you buy one of my books or join one of my courses, I have to earn your money. That's how I look at it. Now, like I said, I look at it as a very equitable proposition because it's just open to anyone. But when you are in that space that you feel that you're entitled to certain things, it is a very ugly, ugly trap. It creates a lot of problems. It creates a lot of unhappiness. Because if you can shape your mind around the conundrum of what I earn versus what I deserve, because many people feel that they deserve certain things. Like, okay, one of the biggest lies on the planet. I went to college, therefore I deserve a great job. I have college credentials and skills, therefore I deserve X amount of money. No, you don't. What you deserve is what the marketplace will pay for, well, actually, not even deserve. What you will earn is what the marketplace will pay for whatever skill sets you have to offer to the said marketplace. That's what's, that's what's going to happen. That is the thing that's going to happen. So this whole business of what you deserve 
is going to create a lot of problems for people who are not capable of earning. All right, so we'll deal with uh, the first one, and the first concept. It is sometimes I figure that I am the therapist of entrepreneurs because I've been there. It's a very lonely thing to be an entrepreneur, especially if you're in a family where people tend to frown upon that type of thing. So we were talking and uh, she was talking about what she deserved because we did the business consult and I always get into life goals because one thing that you should do is get your life goals together before you get your business goals together so they can mesh because if you don't you can frequently have a very successful business and be really miserable because your business doesn't facilitate your life goals. It happens all the time because people are chasing money and not chasing freedom. So we we're talking and gave her some things and this is uh, some really good advice on her business and you know she saw how it would have an impact. Then we kind of went on and she hit me up with, uh, <laughs> let me ask you a question. And I said, okay. She's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm finding it challenging to date. And I was like, why? Because, you know, at this point, I didn't know what she looked like, you know, <clears throat> until later. She's an attractive woman, but she's 40. And I'm like, <clears throat> you women don't want to hear this, but, you know, your value declines the older you get because guys like younger models hate me if you want to it's true and your pulling power as you grow older is frequently going to diminish and that's what's expanding like i said she's an attractive woman but i had to give her the cold harsh truth because she says these words i deserve a good man and i just kind of pause because this is something that if you're not aware of typically what you are as a person is what you will draw into your life. When I am full of fuckery and when I'm about bullshit, because at times I'm human and I do that, I will draw exactly that into my life. So anytime that I'm with <clears throat> someone that's inappropriate for me, it's because I have inappropriate inner behavior. You have to claim your own shit. And anytime that I have some shit like that going on, I have to step back and go, okay, what did I do to bring this shit into my life? And then I was like, oh, you were about fuckery. So that's why you got fuckery into your life. When I work on being my higher self, which is a bitch, it's hard trying to be the better person. I don't invite fuckery into my life. And this is a male thing. This is a female thing. What you are is what you will draw water seeks its own level and I told her that and I was like if you're drawing fuckery bullshit bad guys it's something in you and a lot of women and some guys were like no 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 it's not true the world is crazy the world is mad no it's your janky ass so we went through that and then I gave her my speech on what you earn and what you deserve I said you know I don't know what you look like you know I'm going to take your words you're attractive uh, you're clearly smart you're very really, you're really successful you're going to be even more successful, but this is from a guy. Most men don't give two shits to how much money you make. If you are attractive to that guy, that's enough. That, that's it. I have had friends who have married women they didn't know, really didn't care because she was hot. That's serious. The, the criteria was that fucking low. She was hot. They married her because she was hot and fucked them well. So the, for a lot of men, and I will go ahead and put this as men who are not involved, because if you're an involved man, you have your own economy, you have your own world, you have a different criteria for the women that enter your life. And it, her being hot is just the the floor. That's the floor. That's just the that's just what you need for a mission. There, there has to be much much more if you're an involved man. Many men are not involved, and I told her that it's like so. This is what you do. You get your girly on, and I know women go, No! Another man saying being more feminine. Wah! Every woman who's a friend of mine that has listened to my advice to the letter has gotten a man or gotten married. Why? Because I'm a dude. You can go ahead and put what your criteria is, because this is where women go wrong. 
you use the criteria that you evaluate us and think in your head that we should use the same criteria to evaluate you and we do not so we had like this long conversation about that stuff because i mean we talked about 50 minutes for business and then maybe 30 about her personal life and i said what you earn is what you're going to get what you kill is what you want to keep if you want to have a relationship with a man you're going to have to change who you are as a person i know people are throwing shit at their phones and computer screens right now because i said that because the thing is if what you are is good enough to get what you want why don't you have it because it's not it's not I, I, i'm telling you I've, I've been through it myself when i'm at my higher self the women that walk into my life that just pop up in Publix, the gas station target are fucking amazing when i'm about fuckery i get trash but i know that about myself and i self-correct many people think it's the world out there that is creating the problem when they don't realize that their inner world is all fucked up you get your inner world together your outer world will reflect that if your outer world is fucked up your inner world is fucked up there is no one immune from this shit so we went on and on and on and then it, it got me to some other things um things happen here on youtube there are people who feel that you know once again like i said in the beginning of the video I have to earn your viewership. I have to earn your money. I have to earn it. It's an effort. It's a process. You don't owe me shit. You don't owe me any fucking thing. But there are many people who feel because they <sighs> breathe, the world owes them a living. The world owes them. Like that's this thing with the minimum wage is just not going to work out. Raise it all you want to. It's going to be some ear dire consequences. But I want you to really, really think about what you've earned in life, what you've really, really earned. In uh, the book I'm working on, The 50 Laws of Hustling, one of the laws I'll tell you is don't build a kingdom in a thimble. And this is what many people do. They'll take this event. They'll take something that really in the grand scheme of life is very small. And they will build a kingdom in that thimble. And then when... Now, thimble's not that big, right? It's like, you know, pinky finger size. When that thimble is rocked, their world is rocked. Do not build kingdoms in thimbles. And that's what she was doing with this whole thing, with the relationships. I mean, women, if you want to do, there's the three Fs. Be his friend, feed him, and fuck him. Now, the first one is the hardest one because many women can do the other two with ease easy see now this is being a dude's friend he can tell you any old thing and you like you don't lose your affection for him you actually that will actually have this dude open up to you like he's never opened up to anyone before but the minute he says something that is honest basic something you don't like you're gonna jump all over him you're gonna call him a chauvinist pig you're gonna say all this other stuff and then he's going to lock down he ain't going to tell your ass anything relevant ever again. He's just going to fuck you until some better chick comes along. And you're going to wonder, I gave him the best. Once again, going back to the whole thing about this. What you earn, virtues deserve. When you earn a man's love or a woman's love, you're going to get a whole different chick or dude when you earn it. But when you feel because uh, you dated for three months or... You spent X amount of hours sharing the same oxygen. <laughs> you haven't earned anything because the person's contributing the same thing. So, you know, we, like I said, we went on and on and on and on and on. And she was just like, well, I'm a good person. I'm awesome. I work out five days a week. I do all of this stuff. I mean, just, I'm like, okay, I believe you. I believe you. And, um. Uh, I just gave her the hard truth and I said, you know, the older you get, it's going to be harder for you to land the kind of dude you want because of your behavior. Your behavior is pushing away the man that you want because honestly, if a, the type of dude you want, and she kind of laid it out, you know, at least two degrees, graduate degree, blah, 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 all this other stuff. I said, he can get a 21 year old who's not going to give him the problems that you're going to give him. 
and she can also give him children. A lot of men want to get married. I know you're like, no, they don't. Yes, they do. And a lot of men want to get married. This is what men are afraid of. Men are afraid of marrying the wrong woman. They're not afraid of marriage. They're afraid of marrying the wrong woman. That's the big scare. So a lot of dudes want to get married. A lot of dudes want to have kids. They just don't want to marry that crazy bitch. So they're out there. They just are not prepared for the bullshit that you want to bring. Because uh, another thing I told her, it's like, you you are what I call a faux equality woman. And she's like, what's that? It's like, you pretend to be equal, but you still have expectations that a man's going to do certain manly things, yet he's going to treat you as an equal and also capitulate and let you act like a woman when you want it. That's incongruent as hell. And any dude that's capable of concrete thought is pretty much going to reject that notion on a conscious or subconscious level. And that's when we started to run into some problems. <laughs> I was like, she's going to do a chargeback. I know it. But I was like, fuck it. Uh, this is how we roll on the G-verse. You know, it's it's about congruency and it's about, you know, she asked, so I told. And um, the call didn't end too well because, like I said, I was like expecting the chargeback until I got that email this morning that she actually wants to talk again. But um, this whole thing is you have to earn your life. When you are focused on earning your life what comes into your life is different when you're hoping and wishing for certain things to occur when you are expecting certain good things just because you feel entitled now in my course right now 30 days to 2500 bucks there are people who are good people who've been working hard but now their, their thought process has been, you know, as well as Dwayne puts it, I'm teaching people to rethink. They're getting more benefit from the things they were already doing. They're just doing them a little bit better. And see, this whole course isn't about like, well, for some people, it is a 180 degree change. For a lot of people, it is. But if you just facilitate your thought process just a little bit, you can get some serious returns and that's this big thing about earning because all right i own my life and what does that mean it means i'm responsible for my health which is why i have to work out i'm responsible for what i eat i'm responsible for earning money i'm responsible for i am responsible for the g-verse the government's not responsible for the g-verse um no one else is responsible for the g-verse is my responsibility and it is my role as the overlord of the g-verse to make it happen to make it do what it do it's every morning i wake up and i think okay what ideal can i come up with to improve the g-verse what how can i improve my uh, service to my customer how can i become a better person earn 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 and when you're earning something else happens you bring other people into your life who try to earn. You will start to subconsciously reject people who are not appropriate for your life. That's why many of the people who are in the G-verse or in the 30 days to 2,500 bucks to Hustle University, there a lot of those folks in those courses are experiencing a lot of blowback and pushback from family because they're changing their energy. And it's scaring people and it's like, oh, you know, you're messing around in storage units. Oh, you're doing this. Now, I will tell you something that's very funny. A one guy in the G-verse, actually his wife was like saying, why don't you implement some of the stuff that's in 30 days to 2,500? And he was like, he even admitted, he's like, I was kind of half-assed doing it. Then I started doing some stuff and he actually, I don't know how it happened, but the money ended up in his wife's PayPal account and she showed him and he was like, you're giving me the money. He's, she's like, no, I'm keeping this 800 bucks which is like a third of the way to the 2,500. So this is what's messing up a lot of people about deserve and earn. Many people take certain things as a birthright. Like if I'm in a relationship with someone serious and you know, I'll put then I'll just be straight up. I'm either woman, there's two categories. Either, you know, she's really, really serious. Or I'm just fucking her. A lot of people go like, ah, that's so ugly. I'm just honest about it. Most dudes do the same shit. And typically, when I'm with someone that I want to put time and energy into, they're earning 
my love. See, I, I don't do the whole traditional dating thing. I, I stopped that shit a decade ago. Well over a decade ago, really. Because it doesn't work for me. If it works for you, keep on doing you, Mr. Boo. Uh, no, I don't need to go down there. Actually, yeah, I need to be over here. Um, if it works for you, do it. But it doesn't work for me. I uh, sat down logically and came up with my rules for dating. And when I just started implementing them, my life changed. Because understand, you have to really know yourself really well before you can be successful with another human being in a relationship. If you don't know yourself, somebody who's adroit or really good at psychology or good at figuring people out or reading people can come in and manipulate you and fuck up your relationship. <laughs> I've seen it happen because people do not know themselves. Once again, earning versus deserving. You want that big life. Uh, you want a life of design and intent. You will have to earn it. It will not be given to you. It will not. And this is another thing about the earn proposition. When you start earning your life, you are going to enhance your life in so many ways. In the beginning, it's going to be rocky as fuck. Because this is a new way of living. It's a new way of thinking. It's a new way of doing and it's going to throw you and there's going to be some slot backsliding and there's going to be some pushback from friends and family because when you excuse me earn your life you change who you are as a person and there are many many people that have a huge problem with changing who they are when you start talking about change when you start talking about revamping the personality, you run into the keeping it real proposition. I'm just going to keep it real. There ain't nothing wrong with me. If your life is not what you want it to be and you're not enjoying the fruits and benefits of this wonderful world, then you need to change. I will tell you that because I'm not afraid of the truth. Just like I told the client who wanted the truth because I'm not trying to fuck her. Many men will not tell you the truth about yourself, women, because they're trying to fuck you. And they know if they're like, well, if I tell the truth that that hope and wish of me one day a hidden ass going to evaporate. And fellas, I'm going to tell you by telling her the truth, you have a better chance of hitting it than you do by lying to her. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. So, ooh, I'm looking at houses. Yeah. Um, because I know people are like, he's driving it like aimlessly. No, I'm looking. Because you in my neighborhood, you have to drive around because listings and shit. You you need sometimes when you see the listing, that shit's gone already. Uh, this is interesting. But typically, when you are an earner, I, I'll give you a I, I'll tell you a quick, quick well, it won't be quick, it'll probably be what it will be. But when you become an earner. When I worked for a certain contract office furniture firm, there was two groups of salespeople. There was the farmers and there were the hunters. Farmers were people that were members of certain civics associations or they were members of, they had a lot, they had a sphere of influence. They, they had a lot of connections. You know, the person that had 500 plus people on LinkedIn they're, those were the farmers, and they leveraged their connections to make sales, which is awesome. It's a great way to make a living if you have those many connections because it's less work. Now, I did not have those connections. Therefore, I was a hunter, which means I had to go out and create as many connections as possible as fast as possible, or I didn't make any money. Now, the earner versus the deserver and even the deserver is not like the farm, the person that feels they deserve certain things. That's not even the farmer, because even the farmer has to go out and cultivate the crops, you know, plow up the land and stuff. They they still work, but people who are in deserve mode are often very frustrated and mad and angry at the world. So when you become a, a, an earner, you'll be like me, a, a hunter. And I went in and I, I didn't have any connections. I just had to go out and meet people. I was having lunch with folks that didn't know. It's just, it exposed me and exposed a lot of weaknesses in my character because I'm an introvert. And a lot of people who 
have known me for years would be shocked to hear that because I can go to the party and be the life of the party. It's just, it's very wearing on me. But <clears throat> I learned how to really, really get into the mold, do well, make money because I was forced to be an earner. I was forced to because it's like, if you don't earn, you don't, you don't make any money. And when you get that high, that high of being an earner, a person who earns and owns their life, it, it will be a remarkable change in who you are as a person. Because I remember it was like my first good sale. It wasn't a big sale, it was a good sale because that meant I was gonna eat that month. I chased this lady down. I called this woman no less than 50 times because I made a lot of mistakes. I was like over calling people but it was just, I cold called this woman 50 times because I had a little chart and I like hash marks today, today. And it got to the point where it became a game because it for me, it went past getting the sale to this woman is going to return my phone call. And I would like the voicemails were like, hey, Jill, this is Glendon Cameron. Just want to set up, a, you know, it went from that to Jill, we need to talk. I'm going to keep calling you because I have a, something that can benefit your company, right? It just got way too personal. It became really stupid. And the last phone call, Jill, this is Glendon. I just want you to know that you will make my day when you return my phone call. I am living to hear the sound of your voice. That was the last, I mean, crazy, right? Totally crazy. Uh, and she called me up laughing. She's like, okay, I've had a really horrible day. I've had some stuff go down. And sure, you, your, your, your voicemail made me laugh and I needed that today. And that's how I got in. Got in, it was a um, really small job. They only had six offices. I mean, maybe $22,000 gross sale. And I probably made around $3,000 off that deal. And, you know, but <laughs> I worked it and the process of making the phone calls and listening to myself and talking to her, because this is the thing that was really, really brutal. After I got the sale, I was like, okay, tell me what I did wrong. Typically, as someone that wants to earn their life, these are some of the steps that you have to do. You have to become very accountable for your fuck ups. That, that's number one. It's really easy to sit back and go, yes, I did this and it was great and grandmother loves me. That is not going to help you grow as a person. That will keep you warm and fuzzy. When you start saying, hmm, reason I didn't do X and Y and Z is because I screwed up. Like all the jobs that I lost, sales jobs that I went for, I had a strong suspicion why I didn't get it. I have strong suspicion to outright confirmation because it's amazing that someone that you call for the sale, if you just call them up and say, look, you know, um, thank you for your time. I didn't get the sale. And will you tell me what did I do wrong? They'll tell you. Everyone wants to have that conversation. They'll talk to you for 30 minutes. Well, you know, you came, you weren't prepared. Uh, you know, we were looking for certain product lines. We told you that you didn't have them. Just... I mean, some of them were brutal. Some of them was just like, I could just kill myself right now. It was that bad. That's how bad I screwed up. I mean, it was um, highly, highly embarrassing. It was very embarrassing. And one, this was like, and this, this didn't even happen. The guy was just like, just the way that you looked at my wife on the picture on the desk. And I was like, excuse me? I mean, he was just like, you know, I felt a little odd that you were staring at her so hard. I was like, I didn't even remember her. And I was like, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was doing it. I didn't know. So that was something else that I learned. Some people can be like extremely sensitive to certain things and you can do something and you have no idea that you're actually offending them. I had no clue. That cost me to sell. I had no clue. It was just like, and I was like, look, let me take you to lunch. Let's talk about this. And he's like, I'm like, look, you know, I, this ain't about to sell. I really want to know what the hell I did because I don't want to do that again. And uh, we went to lunch. We talked about it. And he's like, you know, 
you know, she's, uh, you know, very attractive. I was like, okay, so this isn't really about me. This is kind of like you're insecure. And he's, he kind of admitted a little bit, you know, she's told him that and everything. But I lost the sale because the guy thought I was looking at his wife's picture too hard. And I know you're going like, that is so crazy. When you have the intestinal fortitude to ask those type of questions and have those conversations, you'll find out a lot about people. As long as you're having what I call very polite, non-invasive, very safe conversations, you're not going to learn a lot about people. You're, you're not. Uh, the best way to learn about somebody is to have a fight with them. You'll learn if they fight fair. You'll learn if they're diabolical. You, you'll learn so many things about a person by having a fight or conflict with them more so than um, being at peace with them. All right, Johnny. Don't know where you're going. And um, I should have used the horn. You, that's when you're really going to find out who that person is. When you have a war, a conflict with them. And I think it's a good thing. I don't shy away from conflict. Some of my best friends, we've had like the worst fights during our, our early years. And we're really cool now because it's a relationship built on honesty. So understand that to really earn your life is going to take you on a different route than the safe, predictable, don't rock the boat, don't you know, stir the water type life. I mean, one of my uh, tenets of my personal philosophy is I'd rather beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. And another one is I will, I would rather fuck up than to regret not doing a certain thing because I might fear fucking up. That's one of the reasons that I have so many experiences because I'm not fearless. A lot of, one of my good friends is like, you're just fearless. I'm like, I'm not fearless. I do a lot of stuff and there's a bunch of fear in my belly, but I just do it anyway. And that's how you get experience and that's how you move forward and that's how you build a life of design and intent. But just following uh, traditional safe pathways, you're not going to get that life. You're going to have a life of enslavement and potentially misery. Uh, there's some people who are happy in the slave camp. There's happy slaves. There, you know, there's happy hostages. They, this, you know, like in the Matrix. It's like, you know, just put me back in there and erase all these memories of all this other shit. Because I want to live the lie, believe the lie, eat the lie, dream the lie. Truth scares me. And when you earn your life, truth can't scare you truth cannot scare you truth cannot um take you and just wipe you out truth will be one of the building blocks to the foundation of who you are and you will learn so much by digging into that dirt so that that's this deal you know that's what spawned i'm telling you i gotta say i'm loving these consults lately because they're getting super interesting and uh <laughs>